just took some steaks off of the barbecue and I'm gonna see what happens when I put this chunk of ice onto the grill. Observe. All right, so uh, I'm making chunks of ice of this size all the time for a different project. And so I know this is a 625 gram chunk of ice. And uh, to figure out how much energy this barbecue is putting out to melt this block of ice and uh, completely evaporate it into steam, um, you it takes four numbers, or you can figure it out by uh, splitting up the, the problem into four different sections. Uh, first thing you calculate is how much energy is it taking to, um, to convert this cold ice to uh, ice that's just zero degrees Celsius. So this came right out of the freezer, so it's probably um, at minus 10 Celsius or something like that. And uh, so it takes uh, 2.1 joules per gram to heat the ice up uh, one degree Celsius. So to raise the temperature of this chunk of ice from negative 10 Celsius to zero Celsius, where it's ready to melt, it takes 1,306 joules of heat energy. So that's the first thing. And the second thing it takes is uh, the ice is totally ready to melt at zero degrees, but it has to um, use heat to break down the ice structure to get the water to convert to liquid water. That takes a ton of energy. It's known as the heat of fusion. Uh, it takes 334 joules per gram to actually melt the ice. So for this chunk, that's 208,750 joules of heat energy. So uh, once that amount of energy is dumped in, uh, this thing will actually be water. So then uh, the next, the third part of the problem is uh, the amount of energy that it takes to heat the liquid water from zero degrees Celsius water to 100 degrees Celsius water. And now I get that it dripped down and hit the coals or the, um, the steel bottom of the barbecue of grill. It's cold, but, but somewhere it's, uh, in its life, the water was heated up to 100 degrees Celsius and was ready to turn into steam. So uh, to heat the water 100 degrees um, requires 4.8 joules per gram per degree. That amount of heating uh, adds up to 261,200 joules of heat energy. So then the hot water makes the phase jump from liquid to gas, steam, uh, hot water to steam, uh, which is vaporization. It vaporized. Uh, this took longer because uh, the water did drip down and it gets into the, uh, the wet wood uh, and, and the wet ash and it goes, um, you know, some of it is at the bottom uh, but I assure you that eventually all that water uh, vaporized, completely evaporated, and my barbecue was dry. So, uh, and the vaporization takes a ridiculous amount of energy, like much more than all these other things. It takes 2,257 joules per gram. So for this chunk, that's 1.4 million, 1,410,625 joules. Metal does eventually melt. So then, uh, so that's the last... Uh, that's the last uh, number that you need to add up. So you do uh, the amount of heat energy to heat it up to zero, the amount of heat energy to uh, turn it into liquid, the amount of heat energy to get up to 100 degrees Celsius, and the amount of energy to turn it into a vapor. And all of those, so that's uh, 1,306 plus 208,750 plus 261,200 plus 1.4 million joules for the vaporization, and that is a total of... 1,881,881 joules total. And uh, uh, the energy release took about a half an hour. So we could find out uh, the barbecue output that was, uh, that that ice was subjected to. Um, you know, the proportion of the barbecue output that actually heated up the ice uh, in watts. So um, uh, 1.8 million joules over half an hour is uh, 1,045 watts. So uh, whenever I start talking about watts, people, some people can figure out how much that costs. So the amount of energy that it took to vaporize this block of ice uh, over a half an hour costs about seven cents. And that's the last bit I've got for you.
and that's it. Fire wins.